Perfect. Okay. Hey, Rob. Uh, how's it going? Hi there. I'm doing great. Just uh, hanging out in California, July 1st, and looking forward to our first conversation that we're having in almost a month. Isn't that right? Yeah. 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 We took a little break, did a bunch of things, and now we're back. Um, today, yeah. we are going to talk about um, low back and neck pain, two common mm -hmm. uh, things we hear about from clients, friends, and all over Family the members. Like, Family members, yeah, exactly. Yep. Um, so that's kind of why uh, we wanted to talk about it, just because it is such a common complaint. And um, there are like a bunch of different things that we could touch on, but today we were thinking we would share um, some things that worked, have worked for us personally, some things we've seen work for clients, um, and just like dive into it a little bit. Um, so yeah, do you want to just give a little brief sort of overview of like um, kind of when you think of causes of neck and low back pain, like really briefly, like obviously there's a million, but what comes to mind? Yeah. Uh, so I think some of the biggest contributors to neck pain or back pain is probably lifestyle. Uh, so I guess that's the first thing that comes to mind is, you know, we're not really taking the time to bring awareness to where we're, our body is situated in space. So one way to think about it is a lot of people are getting the neck pain because, uh, so we, just being a human, like I have a forward head posture, like my head will be a little bit more in front of my shoulders and my hips. Um, but I think because of the screens, you know, the, tele, the smartphones, the iPads, the computers and everything, I think the head gets exasperated. Uh, so like the, the skull protrudes forward more, which is going to put certain types of stress forces on the neck. And then I think uh, another one with like sit is with people when they sit and they're doing work. Again, I don't think there's a lot of awareness built around like, how are we, we don't ask ourselves, how are we sitting? And we don't think about things like the sit bones or the tailbone. Uh, we don't really necessarily have the mindset of organizing our body in a way where it's supported when it's sitting. So I think two of the culprits uh, or the one of the main culprits for neck and low back pain is just lifestyle, sofas and screens. Um, like, would you agree with that? What, what are your thoughts? Yeah. Any, any other yeah. things that contribute yeah. to it? I would, yeah, I would just add like, um, those, that's huge. And I think that makes sense to a lot of people. I think a lot of like people can be like, oh yeah, I sit at my desk all day in a certain shape and that doesn't doesn't bode well the other thing i would just add is is stress like we tend to um like we can't ignore the sort of like psycho um emotional component of neck and low back pain i don't think and like a lot of us tend to just kind of like hold our stress um up here like how often do you hear people saying oh I'm, I'm so tight up here like in their upper traps but really it like goes up into their neck so i think people um they get like shallow breathing patterns and um they this part of their body sort of gets angered and it's, it's kind of similar with with the low back i think um i think we hold a lot of like emotional stress and tension in our low back and it's obviously intertwined with um, our lifestyle, like they're sort of one and the same, but it's just something uh, to bring awareness to as we get going with our suggestions. Like, uh, I think we'll suggest some like movements or stretches or things like that, that people can start to think about and do. But I want to emphasize that like your feelings and your emotions um, matter and they are related to your chronic tension and tightness and pain. So that's all I would add to your your thoughts on that so, so I, um, I i like th this is probably a simple way to go for the conversation today is that we have um lifestyle and we have stress okay and um so lifestyle is kind of like a physical a physical behavior that's what i'm thinking of and the mental behavior and everything like why we eat and why we do what we do uh, that's also part of the lifestyle but really let's just think of lifestyle as the physical behavior so I'm putting my body into certain shapes and positions all day. And then if we have stress over here as the other part of the low back discomfort, neck discomfort, and the stress I think comes from like more the, our feel, like what you're saying, like our emotions and our, and our thoughts. And I almost feel like they feed each other, uh, which can be problematic because um, 
I have the physical lifestyle behavior over here. I'm, I'm staring at the screen for like four hours without getting up. I'm sitting on the couch. I'm kind of slouching. Okay. And so like, I'm, I'm in my mind, I'm in my, my feeling center and I'm like putting my effort into my work. Um, and that's the lifestyle, but then it feeds right to the stress because of the position I'm putting myself in with my physical behavior, it creates the stress over here. And then the stress starts to put you into certain patterns, right? Like what you said, so many people say, oh, I, I carry all my stress up here. They get the stress first, it hikes the shoulder, it scrunches the neck, and then they go and they do the behavior all day like this, and it's creating more stress. So you get, does that make sense? Like they just feed each other. They feed each other. And nothing's really, nothing's feeling happier at the end of the day. Totally, totally. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so yeah, do you want to, do, here, do you want me to share like one quick sort of thing that, that I think really helps alleviate low back and neck pain and then we'll kind yeah, of bounce back yeah, and forth? Yeah, no, go, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, tell. Okay. Yeah, so this is super simple. I actually just made like an Instagram post about it. Um, it's one of my favorites and it's just bringing your legs up the wall. So like if you bring your um, spine on the floor and like bring your legs on the wall, you can let your body relax there. Um, if that's a challenging shape for you get, to get into, um, you can just scooch back away from the wall a little bit and give, give yourself a little more space. You can make bearing a pillow under your head, make yourself comfortable. But the reason that that is so helpful, um, I mean, there's a million reasons why, um, but it just allows your entire system, your spine and your nervous system to relax. So we don't ever spend enough time on the floor. Can't emphasize that enough. Um, but I really like um, legs up the wall because it, I feel like it addresses lifestyle and stress in one um swoop or movement swoop yes thank you one yeah. swoop it 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 gets your your spine um in a like flattened sort of place where it can actually relax which it does not do on your sofa or your bed uh fyi like it doesn't it can't really do that on like squishy foamy um uh surfaces and then in addition like it gets so it gets your body basically out of those like habitual sedentary uh, posture like patterns, but then it also gives you an opportunity to like close your eyes, drop into your body and like almost invite that tension to alleviate. Um, the one other reason I really like it is because I feel like um, it's, there's not, it's hard for us to like sit here and give a general advice to many people, but I feel like with legs up the wall, I can, I can, I recommend that to the person who's like overdoing it and over exercising and like just in pain from like, just too much. And I can recommend it to the person who sits all day and never moves their body ever. Um, I feel like it would benefit like most types of people that live in our culture. So um, that's just one of my favorites. Um, and obviously there is no quick fix or easy answer for, for what we're talking about, but that is something if you start doing it, you know, two to 10 minutes a day, like huge changes. Would you agree? Or like, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I think lying on the floor you know this, and if people have listened to the other uh, conversations we've had, I think lying on the floor is probably the most beneficial um, habit to develop or practice to build into your life. Uh, I love this idea of the spine feeling the ground or feeling the rug or the yoga mat, um, because a lot of times we're, we're only exposing ourselves to like hard chairs when we eat dinner or like desk chairs or soft beds and sofas. And so I feel like we're not really getting, we're not giving our spine the feedback that it needs to just um, kind of experience like a Goldilocks sensation, like just right, you know? Um, what, what I will say is legs up the wall. I think legs up the wall, I oftentimes will, sorry, I have to step out of the frame. Uh, oftentimes I'll mention to somebody, I think legs up the wall is like a prerequisite for a lot of movements. Like you almost want to get really strong and comfortable at being able to just do legs up the wall. Um, and that because, that's because of all these different things that it, uh, it starts to benefit the hip, the knees, and the low back. And you can really start to create some strong positions in your body. 
what I noticed though, is a lot of people can't get their legs up the wall. Um, mm. You know, I feel like I'm almost speaking from a place of privilege, having like, not only am I a trainer for like over 10 years, uh, I've just been in my body. I've been active a, a large portion of my life. So legs up wall wasn't a challenge for me, but I would say most men I meet, I would say nine out of 10 men, for example, cannot get their legs up the wall. And so I really like what you said about the, the happy medium would be um, either scooting away from the wall. I really like the calves on the sofa or calves on an ottoman uh, okay. or hamstrings mm -hmm. on the bolster, just because that's going to help the whole like pelvis kind of let go. And like, you know, the pelvis has this intimate relationship with the low back. And when the low back and the pelvis can kind of relax on the floor and they don't feel like they're kind of being like gripped or like, um, I don't know, like, like uh, just holding this like uncomfortable position, when they start to have some ease, I feel like people are really able to start to uh, address their low back pain or discomfort. So, uh, I mean, I, I agree with you. What do you think about, I, I'm, I'm so curious though, because we have so many people exercising, yet we have so many people with low back pain still. Why? <laughs> like, why, why do people have all this low back tension and neck tension, but they're exercising all the time? Like, what do you, what do you see? Tell me a client story. Uh, you know, like, what do you try to, if someone's been doing this for third, 10, 20, 30 years, and they still have back pain, like what's a common, I'll say, error that you see in what they're doing to address this pain? Yeah, so I think that how you move matters. So I think that there's a big like push in our society to go out and exercise, but and people think uh, that they can just go out and do whatever and do any workout or and that that it will be that because they're exercising, they're all their pro like everything will go away. They're they're pain like and for most people that's not actually true because like you said, most people can't even get their legs up the wall. So it comes you sort of you know, so I think that what's important depending on on who you are, like you could be someone like I was someone who was already really active, but I still had really intense chronic low back and hip and pelvic pain. Mm -hmm. And I was moving all the time, but like for like what I had to do was pause, slow down, start to learn about my body and then start to move differently. And now over many years, I've been able to ramp things back up and I no longer have any of that pain, but it took a couple of years. years. So I think years, and I think people need to get it like out of their head that, that if they have chronic neck and low back pain, that uh it's not like that it's just going to one simple quick stretch or thing is going to solve solve all of it it's it's a practice like it's a journey like um so yeah i think that's i mean in a short in a shortened answer like how you move does matter and i do see this commonly with some people as well like pain is biopsychosocial spiritual it's very mm -hmm. multifactorial and like the more they learn about it um, it really is important to address like multiple things. So like you could start to address some of these postural things and still have certain days where your neck is like really bothersome. And that's where I think like journaling or reflecting or looking at your, some stressors in your life, um, can be really, really valuable for alleviating, yes, like your physical body pain, uh, looking at like your, how sensitive you are to other, other people. Like if you have like empathic tendencies, like it's real like you could be holding someone else's pain in your body like starting to like look at things like that might sound woo woo um might be helpful for somebody out there because it's it's really like multifactorial like i said so that that's yeah. like what i do see um and then also one one other thing is like how we our how we perceive our pain is super important so like always thinking you have to stretch it out or 
and that's what you have to do, but that's not working, like, well, take a step back and maybe you're stretching it out is actually contributing to your problem. Like, sometimes I think people are their own worst enemies. So I like to introduce different ideas about pain, start to talk about building resiliency, our bodies are strong and capable. And um, there's a time to rest and relax. And there's a time to engage a bit. And you just got to kind of um, start to learn what your body is telling you. Sorry, what were you going to say? Um, well, I was going to talk about like, uh, you know, from an ener energetic standpoint, you know, there's the chakra system and we have the, it's kind of like we have the two passages uh, to the low back and the throat. And we, so we have like the throat chakra, which is, you know, right in the cervical spine. And then we have the, uh, you know, when I think of spine and I think of low back, I think of tailbone and tailbone starts with root chakra. So, you know, you kind of have this, it's almost like this vessel and it's like, it goes from, you know, right between your, your anus and your sex all the way to the roof of your mouth or the, the bottom of your jaw, I'll say. And there's this really uh, intimate relationship between like everything in between. And I like what you were saying about this um, psychosomatic, you know, like how um, the body gets held in certain patterns based on emotional experience and uh, the mentality, like the psychological framework of an individual. And I liked how you went into uh, this idea of slowing down, doing reflection, journaling, going and seeing a therapist, uh, looking at habits that maybe don't necessarily serve you, I mean, how many of us have a habit? We want to give up the habit, but we can't, you know, and because we feel like it really has control over us. And in my own life, what I noticed is because um, I, I came from, you know, being an exercise guy and I've had, I've had debilitating neck pain. I've had plenty of low back problems uh, over the course of my life. And especially in my, my, my 20s, looking at my behaviors and seeing what things I had to let go of. And it might be as toxic as maybe like, maybe you're having neck pain and maybe you're drinking all the time. Okay. And I'm just doing drinking out there because of, because of the, the location of the neck. I've, I've heard it referenced that usually things that go in the mouth excessively um, or things that don't come out enough can contribute to neck pain, like not speaking your truth. Maybe you're somebody who you bite your tongue a lot. Maybe you bite your tongue when your sibling talks or when your parents talk and you feel like you're 35 years old and you've been holding, biting your tongue, you know? And then you start to wonder why you have this neck pain and you have all the, so, so anyway, that's just a way that, that this, um, the emotional component of our life can really affect our neck discomfort or the low back discomfort. Uh, so I think, I think it's important for people to realize that. And you, you say woo woo and some people will think it's woo woo though. I feel like the younger generation, our generation, I feel like people are starting to wrap their heads around like, Oh, this makes total sense. Um, like trauma exists in the body. If you get, <laughs> if you're walking across the street and you, a car hits you uh, on the right side of the hip and you hit the ground, nothing breaks. Okay. Like, are you telling me that that memory of a car hitting you at the top side of the hip isn't stored somewhere in the body? So, so anyway, I think it's important for people to look at that, you know, like if you have low back pain, lying on the floor, all we're asking people to do when we're asking them to lie on the floor for two to 10 minutes, two minutes, we're asking people to slow down. We're like asking people to give themselves a break. You know, life is hard enough. Being a human is one of the most difficult things on this planet. And all we're saying is like, hey, you want to take care of your low back and neck pain? Give me two to five minutes as often as possible, once a day. And do that for a month. And I'll, I guarantee your low back pain will start to disappear. And I think this is, I mean, don't you think this is tough to do? Why do you think it's so tough to do? Why is it so hard to take five or 10 minutes and lie down? We, because we don't, we live in, that's like a whole big other conversation. It's, we live in a go, 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 um, time is money, capitalist 
um, like patriarchal white supremacist society, like don't even get me started on why people won't stop and give themselves time. But I think, I think people are just like asleep. They don't, they're not putting, sometimes they're just not putting the dots together that like our bodies are the vessels that are like, I, you know, I've said that on other episodes, like that our souls chose to come in and like that to caring for them, like should be of utmost importance in our day but like somehow they get somehow times we don't even get to that right like there's a million other things but before we get into that I want to give people some other tangible go-to things they can do so besides legs up the wall what what's a go-to thing someone can do to help with their pain um okay so lying on your back uh legs up the wall I would I would tell people to um so if they have neck discomfort, this is like, it's so easy. Um, when you're standing in the kitchen, after you brush your teeth, just plant your feet, you know, look at your feet, get your feet under your hips. Okay, point your feet straight ahead. And then just maybe look up and look down 10 times. Okay, turn left I and love turn that. right 10 I times. I love this because it really is that simple. Yeah. <laughs> People are probably Do like, head what? Rolls. Yeah. yeah. Okay, and I if you that. notice that your body is doing it for you okay that means that basically your your head doesn't have the ability to disassociate and like do its own movement so you keep everything south of your collarbones still you do head rolls okay um and it's as easy as that like that's something people can do every day for the rest of their lives it costs nothing and all it's doing is it's just sending the muscles, messages to all the muscles that attach to your cervical spine and just saying, hey, don't forget to move like this today. You know, don't forget to turn your head. I yeah. love it. What about you? Like, um, what, what's a quick, okay. what's a so, quick solution so, that people so, can do? Okay. I, don't, I can't decide which one I, I want to say more, so I'm just going to say two quick ones. Don't, don't kill me. But You're one saying two? Is, yeah, I'm going to say two. I'm sorry. I just can't decide which one is more important. But like one, just go listen to our foot talk if you want more info on this. But like get out of your shoes and start walking in the walking with your, your feet in the barefoot in the grass. Like everything is stacked on top of your feet. The joints need to articulate. Your low back and your neck pain is probably somehow related to your feet. Um, that's one, simple also. And then two is, um, I, I learned this from you for sure, but back your hips up. Most of us, you can, you're standing up, you can probably demonstrate for people, but most of us are moving through the world with the hips shifted forward like that. Women, men, kid, people holding their kids, like I see at almost everyone doing it. And if you could just back them up, <laughs> literally yes, this is perfect. Just like that, everything gets stacked in a line, right? We have a pressure management system between our pelvic floor, our abdomen and our rib cage. If we can just back our hips up, that would do wonders for your low back pain. I promise geometry right, so, does matter yeah yeah human geometry is that we could have a conversation on what is human geometry that would be really cool <laughs> yeah. um okay so two more came to mind uh, okay love it love it okay so this is the piggyback on uh jenna's for or your your first one about walking barefoot so you, you got to think about the feet okay the bottoms of your feet they have all these like tiny little muscles in them that go to all the bones and you have blood vessels and you have nerves in the bottoms of the feet, in the toes, between the toes. They go up the foot, they go up the foot, they go through the calf, they go all around the thigh, through the knee to the hip. Okay, from the hip, it goes to your low back. So these nerves, these arteries, these veins, um, they all go from the bottoms of your feet to your low back, okay? And these are called your, you it's a group of muscles, it's called your reflexive stabilizers. Okay, so walking barefoot on different textures and different surfaces, wood chips, dirt, sand, grass, pebbles, rocks, um, it's going to stimulate the tissues in the bottoms of the feet, which is going to stimulate up the chain to your low back. And all it's going to do is it's just going to get your low back, it's going to encourage your low back to just, um, like get some attention, you know, like the muscles around and around and attaching to your low back are just going to have to like get some blood flow and some, uh, some like circulatory neurological response sent to them. So it's like you think about barefoot walking is feeding your low back, you're feeding your feet, you're feeding your knees, your hips, you're feeding your low back and your pelvic floor for that matter. 
Okay, so it. something as simple as that is it's just, you're, you're just sending a message to your low back to like move. I don't know if move's the best word, but move will work. Okay. Uh, second, thing, second thing is breathing. Uh, I think breathing is a lot more complicated. Um, I would say for me, a, re a really simple way to start is seeing if you can breathe in through your nose and out through your nose and seeing if you can breathe in through your nose for a count of four to six seconds and breathing out through your nose for four to six seconds. Um, and then, yeah, that, that's just a starting point. Uh, but basically, I guess what I would say is getting your diaphragm to move because your diaphragm connects to your low back, the inside of the vertebrae or the inside your body on the vertebrae, your diaphragm literally connects to it. And the more that the diaphragm moves and kind of pushes that pressure that you were talking about up and down, it just starts to, I think about it as like pumping. It pumps all the system around the low back. Okay, so you literally, the more the diaphragm moves, you create space forward, backwards, through the side, up and down, around the lumbar spine, so that the spine can exist in a more spacious environment. And when we have more space, we can, we can access more space, we can move into more space. So breathing. Okay. Um, so to piggyback off of that, um, something, and this is the same, like it's breathing, it's the same one, but just something that, um, people can start to do at home that I, I truly credit to like wrapping up any semblance of like neck tension or tightness that I used to have is like taking a resistance band and wrapping it around my rib cage. Um, yep. Maybe we can do like a tutorial video another time, but someone could even do it with like a yoga. I like resistance bands because it, it gives more feedback, but you could even, yeah, you got it. You could even do it with, with anything really. And you know, I would, I would set that mine up rather snug, but all it did is it taught my, my rib cage, all these parts and all these little intercostal muscles and things that weren't really working when I was breathing, it got them working and, and it relaxed my neck. It, you know, I think some things in my neck were probably overworking. I, I probably don't fully understand the science behind why it worked for me, but it really did. Um, and just Rob just kind of showed you, um, there's another version where you like wrap it all around your shoulders, but that version works as well. Oh, that, and that's just a great starting, version, yeah. And I, right, I love that version. So just starting to wake up these muscles under there can really alleviate your neck tension. We don't realize like parts, parts are overworking. So, um, and then also, like you said, nose breathing was like a huge thing for me for down regulating my nervous system. So I big nose breathing is super helpful. Um, and then, yeah. And then the last thing I think, and then we can probably recap everything we said and, and wrap up. The last thing is like, yes, go out and walk and move as frequently as you can. Like we know we live in this sedentary culture and we know that movement is 99.999% of the time better than no movement. So yes, I said how you move matters, but don't let that discourage you from getting out of your chair, off your couch and head out for your walk. And I have people who probably don't need, wouldn't say they are the most experienced as far as like body awareness or, or kinesthetic awareness, but like they say like just getting on their walking routine helps them with manage their low back and neck pain. So that's also something simple. Like I think everything we've said is really simple, but get out and walk more and move more, right? Take a class. Um, that does help. But if, if you are having the kind of pain that isn't getting better, I wouldn't go for the intense class until you do some internal reflection, but move. <laughs> yeah. And, and I, I would even say like, if you're getting the discomfort and your neck and your low back and you, you're just going through these bouts of, Oh, it gets better, but then it always comes back. And, and what, what I might say is like, go work with somebody, uh, go work with somebody, get another set of eyes on you. You don't have to become, you don't have to like go work with somebody for the rest of your life, but get someone who is um, uh, like competent uh, in their skill or in their craft or, you know, who you get a recommendation, a referral from, and they're like, Oh, I'll go to see this, this body work or this trainer and get them to like, take a picture of you, take a video of you, get them to explain what they see. Because at the end of the day, if you don't have a sense of where you are, how can you ever move somewhere new? But like, if you don't really under, like you think, you think you're this way. Okay. You think you're, your pot, you think you look like this in the world 
And then you go work with a trainer or something and they actually say, well, actually, this is where you are in the world. Okay. And, and you want to, you want to learn how to kind of um, create a different shape in your body that's going to alleviate the neck and low back pain. So I think getting guidance on, uh, on where you are, because mirrors don't really do it. Uh, I think one of the things that does do it is if somebody takes a candid photo of you and you really don't know, I think that's one of those <laughs> things people tend to say, oh, I hate how I looked in that picture. Like that's a good way of like getting a sense of how you stand and where your head is yeah. or where your hips are. Uh, so I, I like the idea of like getting some guidance on where you're at and then yeah, move, like, like take your shoes off, go, go do something that down regulates that stress. Because if your shoulder drops a little bit, if that head is a little bit, uh, you know, less, less in a stuck position and just kind of gets a little bit more, more ease and um, relaxation brought to it, I think it will trickle down the chain to the low back. So simply by doing what you said, Jenna, figure out how to down regulate your stress, drop that shoulder, uh, and then start to implement these other things, walking, walking barefoot, nose breathing. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, let's yeah. just give a quick recap for it and then we'll, and we'll wrap up. Let's just kind of restate really quickly everything we mentioned. We mentioned laying on the ground, legs up the wall, finding it in a, a way that feels accessible to you. Um, mm -hmm. We mentioned, um, what, what, what was after that? What did you mention after that? We, we, talked about, we talked about nose breathing. Oh, right. Uh, we nose talked breathing. About, we talked about just doing oh, simple just, things. Just doing moving circles, your head. Yeah. Rotating a little up, bit. Right. Looking we down. Talked, right, barefoot walking, um, walking on different textures. Really textures, helpful. We talked band about banding, rib cage. Rib, rib cage, letting the neck relax. Journaling, self introspection can actually help with this chronic body pain as well. Um, yeah. I, and I then moving. The moving sure yeah. yeah and and working with someone i think that like it's invaluable help get, getting guidance from someone to help you start to figure out like maybe they'll ask you the questions that helps produce the aha moment for you to realize why you have the pain right yeah. so working I, with someone I, can I've be done, really helpful totally i've done sessions with people I, i've i've done two sessions with somebody and they're like holy cow you blew my like you know th this was so invaluable and then and then like I hear from them a year later because they have another question. I don't think you have to sign your life away and just go spend all this money. But I think it's, it's worthwhile exhausting your resources. YouTube does, and Instagram does not have to be your, your, the end all of like, oh, I can't figure out my pain. It's like, you know, um, go see a therapist a little bit, get a massage, see if this person gives you, a, you know, maybe this is the massage that helps undo whatever that's been bothering you. Uh, I think totally. you have to get out. It, it's really tough with COVID. I think getting out and meeting people and, you know, listening with like open ears and an, an open heart and, and staying curious. You talked about that once, right? Like being curious about your body, uh, I, I think it's yeah. a, it can pay, be a really beautiful journey. Pay attention, notice and care, like start to care about your, your, your taking care of your body. Like put it at the top of your list as part of priorities. That's probably <laughs> sums everything up. <laughs> I, I love that. That needs to be a, a conversation about and, yeah. what it takes to put your body at the top body. of the list. Top of the list. Yeah. Great. Let's, let's end on that note then. Um, Okay. Thank you, Rob. Well, thanks so I much. Look forward to our this was really cool. Yeah. yeah, it was awesome. I look forward to our next conversation.